Hey guys, really excited about today's review. It's spring, new products are starting to hit shelves again. Uh, today we're gonna be looking at one of my favorite childhood robots, and that would be Voltron. Um, so today's review is sponsored by 3.0, who sent us this amazing new Robo Duo Voltron. Uh, we haven't looked at anything from the Robo Duo series today, so this will be a first for us. Uh, I thought I'd just start briefly and give a little history of Voltron and Voltron toys. Uh, Voltron came to America circa 1984. We started getting a toy line around then. I think Matchbox was one of the earliest producers. Uh, and they did a version of this Y&K Voltron that came out in uh, Japan. Uh, this is actually the first one I got. Um, I'm not sure how I got it. I think a relative of mine got it import from Japan. Uh, this was 1981, so about three years before the toys and the, we started seeing the cartoon emerge here in the States. Um, so this is one of my favorite Voltrons. There were a lot of Voltron toys that came out back then of varying sizes and varying color schemes. This one to me was the one that kind of closely resembled the look in the cartoon. So I really kind of connected with this more, appreciated it a little bit more. Um, and I think the, the new Robo Duo kind of mimics that look as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I thought I'd just bring it out to show, to show for size comparison and just some of the features and how uh, we've seen an evolution in nearly 40 years, uh, I guess more than 40 years since this guy came out in terms of uh, Voltrons. Uh, I think the most recent Voltron we got was 2018. That was a Lego Voltron. So this is our first new Voltron in a while. Uh, as always, I like to check out the boxes first. Uh, you can see this box here. I love the artwork on it, the whole Defender of the Universe with all the lions breaking out there with uh, Voltron holding the blazing sword. And then on the side, that great profile with all the lions um, going uh, along vertically here on the box. That reminds me of the really old packaging that had all those lion calls out, uh, call outs on the back. And of course, on the back there, they have the lions with the numbers, which is great. Um, they always had these numbers on them, as you saw in the, the uh, vintage Voltron I have here. So they kind of kept that numbering them all and, and listing them all out here on the back of the box. So you kind of get that nice breakdown. It's kind of has a great retro feel to this uh, toy, even though it, it's uh, modern. So I kind of appreciate how they captured that here. And like we see with most of the three zeros, they have the window box display when you open it here. Again, it's Velcro. Uh, I've said several times how I feel about Velcro. I'd prefer to get that magnetic slip instead. Uh, this one has a little uh, tissue paper here, I guess, to protect the uh, window from scratches. And there we can see our guy. He's uh, encased in plastic, so you don't get a really clear shot. Uh, but we'll open this up in a second. And then a nice shot of uh, him transforming over here, a little artwork of the character. And this looks like an actual product shot in the fantasy situation as opposed to some uh, art drawing. So um, that's essentially it. It's got this really nice sort of premium look to it as well. Uh, so definitely appreciate that. So uh, I'm excited. Why don't we open this guy out and uh, check him out? So for ease of uh, simplicity here, I just kind of removed the robots from the box um, just to see how everything would fit together and uh, save some time. Uh, there's a lot going on in here. We'll go through it all together and give you some nice close-up shots so you can really check them out. Uh, so basically you have a top layer that has all your lions in it and it has all the bladed accessories of course these bladed accessories back in the uh, original release were all chrome one piece one color did not have this level of detail i'll have a nice picture of all the the bladed accessories for you over here so each lion had his own unique little blade accessory now the original lions were all one piece uh, this one has a separate tail that comes with the figure that when he's in his lion mode, you can put the tail on again and you get a little bit of articulation there because of the, the slots cut out in the tail. So that's kind of great. Uh, another feature is you can see him here in robot mode. He has these covers that weren't present in the original Voltron release. And what these basically do is give you a smoother look to the lion. Uh, of course, these, these move and come out of the way here so you could take the, the legs down and then you could tuck these covers uh, up and underneath the arm here and behind and they fit in a little snug along the body so they're out of the way uh, but they don't ruin the aesthetic of the line at all uh, so when he's in lion mode which is easy to convert to lion mode you get him out of the way and you have this smoother look again of the lion uh, same with the back the legs move out of the way here so you can get the legs out and the uh, the covers rather than the legs um, move out so you could have the nice look of the lion and then you could sort of maneuver them um, back in underneath the legs 
uh, to get out of the way so you have that smooth look behind the legs. So it's kind of a nice design feature that they added to this. Um, it's a little bit extra uh, work in the transformation, but I think in the end it, it makes it worth it uh, to have that option of looking a little bit smoother. Um, so the, the lion here has a little bit more articulation in the midsection than the original lion did. It just had one joint. This has two. So that's fun that they added that in there. And then of course you have the, the blade. Now the blade has a little um, additional slot here. So it connected the mouth and he could hold it in place a little bit more. Uh, the original lions, of course, when the accessories were in there, just kind of like fit in the mouth and you would just have to clamp the mouth around it. So this fits in there quite snug and he's able to hold his, his piece uh, in there. And then of course the originals came with all sorts of accessories and side weapons as well. Um, just making sure I got the right one here. So this one connects with a plasma cannon and a lava cannon on there. I believe this is the lava cannon. So the original one, all these accessories were plastic and they just kind of clipped on the side. Uh, in this case, they just go in the little slots that are on the legs there. So this cannon will fit in the front here. And then the, the larger uh, plasma cannon here fits on the side. And uh, I, don't, I don't think that's the plasma cannon. We're discovering this together, it's fun. I think this is the plasma cannon. Uh, yep, um, it was uh, a little bit more. Nope, that's not it either. I just, it's been a while since I've seen, uh, since I've had Voltron in my life. So I'm just trying to get the hang of all these, all these different parts. Um, it's, it's one of these, but, uh, basically what it would do is it would just, uh, clip onto the side here as well. And then, uh, he would be just armed up. Um, I think it's just going to be trial and error, depending on what is the right size to fit into. And it's this one. Of course, it's always the last one you check. And this one would fit in here as well. And then this would be him fully kitted up. I'll get you a nice close up. So you can see here, he even has the, the section at the top that pops open to give him just a little bit more weapons. Uh, so uh, these lions, they you know had these additional guns and these weapons to fight because there wasn't much they could do from... Um, I guess the uh, lion mode or animal mode uh, before they converted into Voltron. So this just gives them a little bit more uh, depth of play there. And of course, he, he looks really good. Uh, the joints are tight on him. He uh, holds that that lion look really easily. And he just looks nice and, and um, form uh, very great paint applications across him. He's uh, engineered very well. And I think it looks pretty good. That additional articulation on the character just gives you a, more of a range of uh, functionality with him. And I think he just looks better. Uh, the originals, just the legs went up and down. These, these maneuver out a little bit, uh, particularly the back legs to give you a little bit wider of a stance or narrower of a stance. And that additional articulation in the midsection just lets you do a little bit more with the lion than you could with the original lion. So that's kind of appreciated um, in the, the engineering here. So I think that's a nice touch that they added to these. And um, I think you appreciate that you get uh, just as much functionality as you do out of Voltron in robot mode as you do in this mode. And it's fun to have that additional tail to make it a little longer because the originals were a little nubby, so they would connect into the arm slot. So that is our red lion uh, looking pretty sharp. So why don't we move on over to the green lion next? So next up, we have our green lion. Um, he's one of my favorite lions as well. He was just a little bit of a unique design over the, uh, the red lion here. Uh, this guy transforms the same way as the red lion and has that nice tuck-in feature um, that we saw on the other one to sort of give you that more seamless lion look coming out of his robot form mode. Um, these are a little bit tricky and probably because the joints are just really stiff uh, the first time around. So I'm sure after you get them uh, wear them in a little bit, it should be a little bit easier, but it's also good to have uh, tough joints. I know that was one thing with the old Voltron is after a while we get a little loose and you would sort of lose that ability to, um, to, to keep them in whatever pose you had. Uh, the rear ones are a little bit tricky to get in. And I find what you kind of need to do is uh, come at it at an angle. I'll show you on this side here. And you just kind of um, tuck it down and in and put a little force that way to get them to secure. And once you get them there, um, you then have to rotate the legs here. This way you can't bend them all the way forward because that plastic part's gonna stop it. 
And then once again, you get that, that tail that sticks on here to give you just a little bit more articulation in the rear than it used to have. He still has the articulation in the midsection. That's great. And the head and the weapon are going to work the same as they did in the original. Uh, so you can see him here up close, uh, fully kitted out. I got him with his uh, tri sai as I like to call it. And then he also includes what is called a shooting star on his one slide. Now you'll notice he has, uh, uh, you can't see it because the weapons are in there. He doesn't have round pegs. His pegs are, are more slotted. So you kind of are restricted in how the, um, the pieces connect. So you kind of have to have it right. So that, it's kind of great they did that. So that way you don't accidentally put ones in here with the, the small circular pegs. These, are, these ones have the uh, larger pegs. So um, in, in terms of the trial and error process, if you didn't know which piece went to what character, uh, that would basically be it. <laughs> it. It only fits in this figure. Uh, so that's great. They kind of designed it that way. So that way um, you don't need to have the instructions with you all the time like I'm using right now to, um, to round it out. So that is our green line. Uh, let's move on to our yellow line next. I know I'm going out of order. I skipped and went to, to blue or to yellow rather, which is number five instead of blue. But um, I, I like this one. I'll, I'll show you why, which kind of makes him stand out a little bit more. So taking him here into his uh, lion mode, um, pretty easy. He just kind of rotates out there. Uh, this one has only the covering on the back legs. Um, the front legs were more part of the design of the figure, so they really stood out. Uh, so once again, really easy to sort of get this out of the way. Um, just kind of come at it at an angle to get it to, to slide in there. And uh, once you got it, it should fit in snug, and then it gives you that nice seamless look. Uh, the, the more metal, you can feel more metal on these ones, a little bit larger. Uh, I like that. It's got a great look to it. Um, and it's, uh, it, it really, this one really feels a lot more like the original as well, um, both in the size and sort of like the, the featuring on it. It hasn't changed as much as the others, which are a little bit different. So I kind of appreciate the, the classic aesthetic. So what I wanted to point out to you, what I like over the other, um, the other versions, and it's a little tricky to get the tail out, is it is the tail. So in the original, um, the blue one just has a yellow tail where the yellow had a chrome. So this one is not chrome, but it, it's still the silver tail. So they kept that color scheme, which I really appreciate out of it. I really liked it. Uh, so again, this one's also going to hold the, the weapon in the mouth, and it has that groove. Much bigger weapon. <laughs> I kind of, I really like the, the weapon on this guy. It was huge. It was like this giant saber. Uh, so that fits in there nicely, too. Let's give you a close-up of this guy. Um, really liked uh, the original on this one as well. Uh, the original had a midsection that would move up with the figure. This one does not. Uh, the middle part moves a little bit but not like the original one did. So a little disappointed in, in that, but I mean, it's not going to be a one for one. They're not remaking the figure. So not really, uh, not really gonna, uh, kill it for me. Um, still pretty happy with the way this looks. Uh, but then you can see him with his, uh, dual shoulder blocker to it there and the radial shotgun blaster on the other side. Again, these are, uh, designed a little bit differently. Than the um, other ones, they have a straight slot instead of a circular slot, and they're much larger, so they're not going to fit on the straight slot on the Green Lions. So that was a nice feat of engineering. Uh, like I said, that middle doesn't come up like the uh, original did. I'll show you what that means. Like this would come out a little bit and then rotate, but it does rotate a little bit, so you still have that cannon. So that's nice that they kept true to that. Uh, he's got a little more articulation in the back legs, you could see. And in the front legs, a lot, a lot of articulation in the front legs. So he could get a wider pose um, and, uh, and he could condense a little bit there too because of the uh, springs on the, the midsection. So he could still move this guy a lot, which you could not do at all in the original because it was all one piece. So great job with that one as well. Uh, so let's take a look at old blue here. He's one of my favorites. And that's why I kept an extra uh, blue one out so we could compare and contrast them. So the blue line was one of my favorites from the original, and I think it was just because of the 
the color at the time. I love blue. Uh, I still love blue. So that was great. They included him. Uh, I'm going to show you this on here and then you'll see it again on the larger version. But there is a panel on the bottom where you connect the uh, blade. Um, the will pop into here. So when he's in his robot mode, you could have that. Uh, whoop, I had the head in the way, but you could have this spinning blade here that sticks out from the, uh, the foot. Um, so I'll put that away for later. We'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, so yeah, just, I like the color on this one. Um, that's one of my favorites. So as a kid, I was always partial to the blue lion. So I brought my old blue lion out so we could see how he, he stacks up in, in size here to the old school blue lion. Uh, so his head doesn't have as much, I think it has about the same rotation as the, the, uh, the yellow one there. And then of course on the back end with the flaps, they move the same way in order to give you that more seamless look on the, the cat. Um, this one's a little more, uh, sticky than the other one, but, uh, yeah, I, I like that feature that they added. Um, that was definitely, like I showed you, not part of the original design, but it gives it a more seamless look. Um, again, it is another point of, um, articulation you need to contend with and, and wear in a little bit there. Now I got it. Um, and then of course the tail, like I showed you on the other version is a different, um, color. It's not silver. Uh, it has a little articulation in it. None of the original tails had articulation. They were all one piece, uh, as you can see here. Uh, this part came up on the original. Uh, let's see if this one does here. It does not. This is welded in. This is one piece. Um, so that's one difference here. Again, the uh, blade fits in really well into the mouth in that slot. And they even cut out the middle so the teeth go in so they don't get in the way. Uh, let's give you a close up here of the blue lion. Uh, so the blue lion looking pretty sharp and he sports a shoulder cannon on his right side here. Now he has circular pegs, so you're not going to confuse it with the yellow uh, lion and his, um, his uh, line pegs there. And then he has a triple barrel mortar cannon as well on the other arm. And uh, that is also circular. So there he is completely kitted up looking really sharp. Um, so this is another nice addition. Uh, like I said, uh, all the original ones, they had chrome pieces, um, for the weapons and then plastic on the arms. So he had uh, straight slots. So he's a little different than his modern counterpart has the circular slots. Um, I think they both had, uh, straight slots on the other one. Uh, so yeah, that's the, the difference, but about the same size as you can see. Uh, same width too, same color scheme. The only thing they're missing is that number on top, although they had the slot there for it. Uh, so that is our blue lion, uh, one of my favorite lions. Uh, let's get over to the big central lion number one next. Okay, so lion number one comes standard in his robot mode. We're just going to convert him by tucking away the ears and then the face into the mouth, pivoting the head forward um, just like this. And then the legs are just going to bend at the at the hip moving it down and get him more into that lion stance. The feet, of course, coming up. So you can get a nice, um, we'll, we'll play around with it in, in, in essence. In the original, at the top here, you just took the arms out. This one's a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna maneuver it to the side here and then we get access to the panel and the panel just kind of opens um, sideways and then you could get that leg out this way and then close it up so you have that seamless look. So we'll have our foot on this side and then we're gonna, you should see like a little uh, cutout um, for to sneak a finger in. And that's just sort of the, the catch you get there. There we go. And then uh, just moving the finger, uh, the foot out and closing it up. So now we kind of have our, our lion here. He's getting down into lion mode slowly but surely. And then you can maneuver that head up and have the, the lion look. Uh, of course, you're going to move the wings here to get the tail out first. Okay. And then we have our, our guy in his lion mode. Um, a little bit bigger than the other ones. And that was kind of because he's the, the, the leader, the central guy here. Uh, so then we'll pull his, um, his blade here. Should go into the mouth uh, the same way. Yep. There should be a slot we'll see in a second here to put it. So this one's a little different. So I think instead of the, um, the, the straight slots, the other one has, it should be able to just secure in place underneath the, the jaw. 
There should be a little notch here, I see. Uh, and he should be biting it. I think this one's more of a pressure fit than the, uh, the other ones. Um, because you have the Voltron head in there. So it's kind of hard to be able to create space to indent it in. And then, of course, we have what's left is the rotary cannons. Um, and they were just going to fit here on the, the front arms, just like they do in all the other um, characters as well. So let's give you a nice close-up of him. Um, so as I pointed out, he's got some midsection articulation on this guy as well, and I'll show you in a second. But uh, they did a nice job of the larger of the lions. Uh, he still has that very impressive size to him. Uh, he looks great with his cannons, which rotate up um, all the way back to that tail. I like how he added the uh, articulation of the tail. That wasn't something that was present in the original um, Voltron series figures. Uh, they were just one piece. Plus this tail was, it, it just never stayed there. After a while, it just broke down and it kept uh, flopping up and down. But they kept that... Um, uh, they took that into consideration with the engineering. Uh, so like I was saying here, he has this midsection bend where he could articulate there one solid piece before. So this is a massive improvement. Uh, he's got a little mobility in the legs. They're not that stiff, so he could have a little bit more of a stance here. So you get a little bit more uh, agency out of his uh, lion mode. And these rotate up and down too. So that's kind of fun uh, to have that additional point of articulation. But uh, this is... This is our uh, number one unit in his lion mode, and here is our group shot of our lions. Um, they usually arranged it something like like this, I believe. Um, let's see how they they have them here in the the book. Yeah, something like uh, something like this, where they have the bigger ones, of course, in the back, and then we have them um, probably like this because how they arrange in their their the feet. So this is our group shot of our lions, looking pretty sharp here. Uh, so why don't we get them all together and give you a nice roundup of Voltron himself. All right, so the gang's all here. Uh, we're going to take him now into Voltron mode to see what he looks like there. This is really easy. Uh, we're just going to do everything what we did in reverse, only quicker. I'll do it in real time here so you guys can see. Uh, so just popping out those pieces. Uh, the only difficulty here is these slide in really easy. Um, you're just going to move your wings out of the way to get the tail there. Uh, the only difficulty here with this one is going to be getting the arms back in. But like I said, you just need to look for those grooves to get the boxes open here. And then they fold conveniently back in here. And then close. You're just going to rotate that so it matches up with the armor. Um, so it's easier to put this away than it was to change them into uh, to lion mode. Um, so you just want to make sure you have everything in the right direction there. And then turn them around. Okay, so now we just open his mouth, and he's got his face that pops back out, and then of course the ears come out to the side. So that is taking lion number one into the primary Voltron body, um, and then we just have the, the wings of course, which open up this way, and they have little notches here so they don't get in the way of the shoulders. Uh, my original wings broke. Uh, it was like one. Of, it's hard to find a Voltron even in the secondary market with those wings. You either get one or none, but they they broke and they uh, they just there's no way to replace them. They were kind of specialty fit on there from the inside, uh, so there's nothing you could do. Um, but they look great on him. So again, he has that road that articulation here in the chest. So we'll see that in full robot mode. And what's fun about the legs is you could extend them out a little bit. Um, the way they have it to give you a little bit more maneuverability in terms of the range of motion. And we'll show you that what that looks like in a minute, the full range of motion there for the legs. So we'll put him off to the side. We'll do his, his right arm. So this is number two. So again, uh, the mouth opens up and you can take the, the weapon out and everything else just kind of pops out really quick and easy here. Uh, the only trick is going to be with the, the legs and maneuvering them. So don't forget to take that tail part off. I showed you how that came on earlier. Uh, so first we get to start by maneuvering out the um, panel coverings here. So that just go in the opposite direction I showed you before. And then you're just going to have the legs um, tuck in neatly here. And then the panel, there's a little slot there. So the, the side of the panel will connect into that, that leg piece there and give you that nice smooth look. Uh, same with the other side. Um, everything just in reverse. So... Uh, transforming Voltron is kind of therapeutic, uh, really easy to sort of, uh, to do this. Um, 
but uh, it could be a little tricky to make sure you get him perfectly in that slot. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to show you each line. I'm going to just show you how to do the, the arms here, and then we'll fast forward uh, into the leg segment. Um, otherwise, this would take too long, and we'll be wasting a lot of time. We'll be showing you how to transform Voltron, which I'm sure you guys know how to do or can figure out, so we don't need to go over it. Uh, so same with this here. There's going to be a little slot for you to stick that in, and then that's what he's going to look like when he is done on the side. Same here. So this was pretty quick and simple, actually, not too much fuss getting the arm uh, just right. And then, of course, uh, give him a little tail tucked down here and then a little bend uh, to get him ready to be in arm mode. And then we're just going to snap him in. You might hear this sound here. There we go. So he's in, and that's pretty solid. And then we get our right arm on our Voltron. I'm just going to skip uh, here, and we'll start on one of the legs. All right, so I got both my arms on my Voltron here. I'm going to leave the mouths open for his accessories. And we are going to shift over and do one of the legs. We're going to start with the blue this time. We'll keep it in order. So just like the other one, we're going to close up the little additional uh, weapon at the top here, take off our little armaments on the side, flip the tail up, no tail to pull off on this one. And then the same thing with the legs on the bottom. You got to open these legs up a little more than you do the ones on the top, just because of the way the design is there. So you just got to keep that in mind when putting this back together. And again, it's got a little um, cut in it so that this one will stick in there as well on this side. And you just got to get it at the right angle. And it's hard to see without the light there. Might help if you take the weapon out of the mouth first. It just gives you a little bit more room to maneuver. Uh, the front arms, though, a lot easier. There's no panel covering for these. Uh, so they should be able to just uh, go like this and tuck out of the way. And then you're going to pivot that head up. It makes that great clicking sound. That was a classic uh, sound on the, the lion uh, back in the day. It still keeps that sound. And then, of course, the joint there allows you to move the feet up and over. And then, of course, you're going to have to move this leg back there, too. So then this will be the look of the lion in his final mode. You just need to make sure you line up the most difficult part here of lining up the... Uh, little holes to get the paneling in just right so it has that sleek, smooth look on the side. Nothing is sticking out where it shouldn't be sticking out, and then uh, it gives you a very smooth, flush look for the whole system. And I think that is a, a smart feature that they added to it, but that is essentially your foot, and you want to make sure you got it all the way down so it has a nice solid base. There's going to be a release button on the back to let the foot come out. And when he is not in robot mode, there should be a uh, paneling that fills in here. There we go, to cover it up so you don't have a hole in the back of the lion. So um, other than that, you're just going to stick his foot into the uh, straight down, just like the original here, right into the robot. And it should click into place once you get it right where it needs to be. And there we go. And he's in. And that is solid. Uh, so I'm just going to cut to the other side, and then we'll show you the Voltron all together. All right, so here we have our assembled Voltron in his Voltron robot mode. Uh, like I said, he's still got that great articulation in his arms, in his legs. And then I'll show you that feature where you can take the, the hip out a little bit here. So you go from this range of motion to a uh, more elaborate... Oops, I lost the side panel there. A more elaborate range of motion where he's able to get his leg almost all the way up so that's fun that they have that little feature in the hip that gives you just a little bit more articulation there uh, so he does come with a couple of accessories here he comes with as of course his blazing sword which fits in that mouth the same way as the sword did for the individual lion so you get a little pressure and you can put that in there and then it holds it pretty firmly in the hand and then that rotating um, laser sword or shield also comes here it doesn't rotate or spin or anything like that and it also has a little um a divot in it there so you could stick it in the mouth just like you did the dagger in the the green lion's mouth so this one you just got to find that uh point this is a little tricky element to get these in here but once you get them in they should stay uh stay in pretty well so let me give you a 360 of them you can see here looking pretty great in his voltron mode uh, complete, transformed, got a lot of great articulation, 
It's got a lot of great coloring, uh, great paint applications. Love that diecast PVC mixture. This is what 3.0 does best. They do these great mixed mediums of figures and it really helps the characters pop. You get a nice premium feel to them. Uh, they look really sharp and they just kind of are just amazing, I think, in that respect. Uh, so the only other feature, and I, I gave you a little tease of this earlier, is the, the panel here that opens in the bottom of the, the blue line. And you stick in this, um, this little buzz saw here into the, the bottom. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. This is kind of, oh, I did it one hand. And then it has that rotating feature, so he could use that shoe blade <laughs> in order to chop up the bad guys. So um, that is a great additional feature on there. Uh, the pivoting legs are great too. He couldn't do any of that with the original. It was pretty much one solid piece. This is all he did. Uh, so I think they did a great job. Um, really, really glad that he came out the way he did. Uh, I love Voltron, so I love having a new one to add to my collection here. Uh, you can see he's about the same height as the original Voltron too. Uh, just a little narrower. And I think that's designed to just give him that action figure sort of appeal. So in this state, he is an action figure and not just this clunky solid mass that the original was. Um, the only difference being that uh, these ones had firing rocket uh, lions, um, as you can see here, and this new one doesn't, but you could live without that, right? <laughs> Although that was a cool feature back then. Uh, fun fact about the green lion, this was the most commonly lost head. Um, I don't know why, but more people lost the green than the red, uh, and that's true. I have two Voltrons, a missing green head from one of them. You try to find them in the secondary market. If you could find it, you're looking at like 60, 70 bucks for a green head, uh, plus uh, if you could even find one. So a lot of people lost it, I guess. Uh, I don't know why. It's uh, very similar in size, so it's, it's not like it was easier or, or harder to lose. Uh, but that is uh, Voltron. Um, hope you enjoy taking a look at this. Uh, he comes in a little bit on the heftier price side, about $300. But again, you are getting this great mixed medium of plastic and die cast. I think it looks amazing. It came out great. You have altogether over 124 points of articulation. Did not have that many on the original Voltron. I uh, still standing in pretty tall here, um, but it fits into that same size range. He's got all the great accessories the original had, the blazing sword, the uh, rotating laser sword here, uh, all the individual swords for the lions, all the individual weapons that will go on the lions, uh, much better quality than the original, obviously. This little fun blade that goes in the foot. Uh, plus he just functions really well with all that additional engineering they did on him. Uh, he's easy to transform, he's easy to detransform. Uh, I wasn't worried about anything breaking during the process. Uh, they added a lot of fun features. Another thing I didn't show you were these knees, although it's filled out in the back. When you want to maneuver him, they, uh, they move up. So if I wanted to bend this knee, I could do that. That metal won't get in the way like it used to. That's a solid piece. You can't bend them in the knee like that. Uh, so that's fun. So you could do some fun poses with them. Uh, so that's great that they added that to it. Uh, so that is our look at Voltron from the Robo Duo series. Very impressive. I uh, like how it turned out. It's got great nostalgia to the uh, older original Voltrons. Um, like I said, he should be coming out in the next month or so. You could pick him up for about 300 bucks. Uh, we'll have a link with a, uh, with a reminder of what our code is at Entertainment Earth. Of course, if you use that for when this guy's in stock, it'll be 10% off and free shipping. Um, as always, uh, try to grab things when you can, when they pop in stock. Careful, this guy might sell out though, so you want to keep on it for when he should be arriving in April, so just keep checking back. Um, you can always pre-order him, but you can't use our code. Uh, so I think, great, he's worth your time. I think he's worth your money. If you're a Voltron fan, you're going to love this guy. Uh, so check him out. That's all for this time. It's uh, spring. A lot of new products are hitting shelves, so we're going to have a lot of new stuff for you guys to take a look at. So please like, subscribe, and follow if you want to see what else we have coming up in the next few weeks and months. We're going to have a lot of stuff, so we'll be covered for the rest of the spring. Uh, so keep tuning back, and I will see you guys next time.